O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Thank you for joining us for the service of morning prayer on Friday, the 17th of July. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. I'm going to take a couple of moments to light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church ascending into heaven. Even when we can't physically gather for worship, I'll invite you to do the same along with me if that's what you've been doing throughout this pandemic. And when we're ready, the service of morning prayer will begin on page six in the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is gracious and merciful. O come, let us worship. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is gracious and merciful. O come, let us worship. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 31 beginning on page 364. In thee, O Lord, have I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. And be thou my strong rock and house of defense, that thou mayest save me. For thou art my strong rock and my castle. Be thou also my guide, and lead me for thy name's sake. Draw me out of the net that they have hidden for me, for thou art my strength. Into thy hands I commend my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I hate them that hold of superstitious vanities. But as for me, my trust is in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. For thou hast considered my trouble and hast known my soul in adversities. 
thou hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, but hast set my feet in a broad place. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble, and mine eye is consumed for very heaviness, yea, my soul and my body. For my life is waxen old with sorrow, and my years with mourning. My strength faileth me because of my adversity, and my bones are consumed. I am become a reproach because of all mine enemies, and especially unto my neighbors. And they of mine acquaintance are afraid of me, and they that see me in the street flee from me. I am clean forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the whispering of the multitude, and fear is on every side. While they conspire together against me, and plot to take away my life. But my hope hath been in thee, O Lord. I have said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies, and from them that persecute me. Show thy servant the light of thy countenance, and save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be confounded, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the ungodly be put to confusion, and be put to silence in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which cruelly, disdainfully, and despitefully speak against the righteous. O oh, how plentiful is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, and that thou hast wrought for them that put their trust in thee, even before the sons of men. Thou hidest them in the secret place of thine own presence from the plottings of men. Thou keepest them secretly in thy tabernacle from the strife of tongues. Thanks be to the Lord, for he hath showed me his marvelous loving kindness in a strong city. But as for me, I said in my haste, I am cast out of the sight of thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my prayer, when I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth them that are faithful, and plenteously rewardeth the proud doer. Be strong, and let your heart take courage, all ye that put your trust in the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of Joshua, the fourth chapter beginning at the nineteenth verse. The people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. When all the kings of the Amorites that were beyond the Jordan to the west and all the kings of the Canaanites that were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan for the people of Israel until they had crossed over. Their heart melted, and there was no longer any spirit in them because of the people of Israel. While the people of Israel were encamped in Gilgal, 
they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at evening in the plains of Jericho. And on the morrow after the Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. And the manna ceased on the morrow, when they ate the produce of the land. And the people of Israel had manna no more, but ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood before him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord bid his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Here endeth the first lesson. The service of morning prayer continues with the Te Deum on page 7. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is written in the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, the twelfth chapter beginning at the ninth verse. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Never flag in zeal. Be aglow with the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, 
live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here endeth the second lesson. The service of morning prayer continues with the Benedictus on page 9. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would grant us, that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. 
Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Protect and prosper, O Lord, all those who labor at tasks of danger and difficulty, especially all of our frontline workers, that they may be preserved in safety and health, and grant that knowing the dangers which beset them, they may ever take thought one for another, and be sustained by a sure trust in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who art afflicted in the afflictions of thy people, regard with thy tender compassion those in anxiety and distress. Bear their sorrows and their cares, supply all their manifold needs, and help both them and us to put our whole trust and confidence in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers at this time for all those who are in need of prayer, those who have particularly asked us to pray for them, and those whom the Spirit of God has put into our hearts to pray for. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thanks for praying with us this morning. I hope that you'll also be able to make time for the service of evening prayer tomorrow evening, beginning at 4.30. Beginning next week, on Wednesday of next week through the 19th of, of August, I will be on vacation and we will not be able to gather like this to, to, to pray the daily services of morning and evening prayer. The lessons and the psalms appointed for all those times that I'm away have been posted on our website, and there's a link to that in the description for this video. I hope that if these, bless, if these services have been a blessing to you, you'll take a few moments to like this channel, to, to like this video, to subscribe to the YouTube channel to make it that much easier to find your way back the next time we gather for prayer. And until then, be good. God bless. And take care of each other. Bye-bye.